Hello, uh, today I'm going to uh, give you a recap of the investor ratios using a Section C question, a 25 mark essay that came from the 2020 um, paper 1, 7127-1 for a QA accounting A level. Um, so just a quick recap of the investor ratio. So there are five that you need to know. First one is dividend yield. You take the dividend per share and you divide it by the market price per share. Okay, so what that shows is the amount of dividend that's been received in relation to the market value of the share. Um, so it's the annual dividend expressed as a percentage of the current market price, which is quite useful. Um, you can calculate that at any point and see um, you know, what the return would be based on last year's dividends. Um, obviously, the higher the percentage, the better. It shows a higher return on the investment. Um, but obviously, with the caveat that the dividend level needs to be affordable. It's where we'll look at dividend cover and see whether it is, in fact, um, affordable. Um, dividend yield is a slightly inadequate measure because it does concentrate on just the profits that have been paid out as dividends and ignores total profits. Obviously, companies will generally not pay out all of their profits as dividends. They'll reinvest some. Um, so uh, the other problem is that the company may be paying a higher level of dividends than it can really afford, maybe dipping into its um, retained earnings, which is not sustainable long term. Okay, second one we need to look at is earnings per share. So that's the profit for the year after interest and tax. So that's the figure, the profit that would go on to your statement of changes in equity. And you need to divide that by the number of issued ordinary shares. Now be careful with the issued ordinary shares. It's the number, not the monetary value. So if you've got a million pounds worth of shares, but they're 10 pence shares, you've got 10 million. So just be careful with that one. So this measures the amount of profit earned by each share after tax, and it's usually expressed in pence. Um, dividend cover. So this is the profit for the year um, after interest and tax, the same figure we used for earnings per share, and dividing that figure um, by the amount of dividends, the value of the dividends that have been paid in total. So that's your interim plus your final. So this is the number of times the company could afford to pay the current dividends from this year's profits after tax. Um, a figure of below one indicates they'd have to dip into their retained earnings in order to pay the dividends. So if the dividend cover was exactly one, they've paid out all of their um, profit for the year as dividends. If it goes below one, they've paid out more than their profit for the year um, because they've used retained earnings. And as we just discussed, that's not sustainable long term. So a dividend cover of two means that half of the profits have been paid out as dividends, half have been retained, reinvested in the company. A dividend cover of seven means that one seventh is paid out, six sevenths retained. A dividend cover of five, one fifth has been paid out, um, four fifths has been retained, and so on. Next one is the price earnings ratio. So this is about how expensive or cheap a share is. So it's the current market price per share divided by the earnings per share that we've already calculated. And that compares a share's market price to its earnings, its profit after tax. And it's how many times the share would have to earn that level of profit to cover its cost. So obviously, the higher the number, the more expensive the share is. So for example, if we've got a share with a market value of £10, earnings per share are £1. That means the share costs 10 times the last reported earnings of that share. So that is potentially quite expensive, but like with all ratios, unless we've got something to compare it with, it's not very meaningful. Um, a higher ratio could suggest that the share price has been pushed up, particularly if it's higher from one year to the next. That could be in anticipation of um, you know, additional earnings, high profit levels, news of a merger, acquisition. Um, so yeah, the share is now expensive. Whereas if the ratio is dropping from one year to the next, that suggests that investors don't expect a great deal from the company. So they're not expecting a, a growth in earnings in the foreseeable future. Obviously, it's not completely infallible. Often the, the price of the share is pushed up, you know, on the basis of rumours that could sometimes be unfounded. So, um, you know, like with anything to do with shares, there's quite a lot of risk involved. Um, interest cover. So this is your how affordable your interest is. So this one's quite closely tied in with gearing. So this is the operating profit before interest and tax divided by the interest payable, which is your finance costs. So this is saying how many times we can afford to pay our interest um, out of our current operating profit. So as I said, it's closely linked to gearing. Um, and the higher the interest cover, the better or more stable the company is. So again, if you've got an interest cover of one, that means you can only just afford to pay your interest, your finance costs out of your operating profit, which isn't a very good situation. And that would usually be accompanied by high gearing. So quite risky. 
Um, other calculations you might need to do, so if you need to find the dividend per share, total dividends paid divided by the number of shares. As I said before, be careful if they're not one pound shares because the monetary amount and the number of shares will be different. Um, and sometimes you might be required to calculate a missing figure using the other ratio. So for example, if you multiply earnings per share by the price earnings ratio, that will bring you back to the market price per share. And that was something they expected you to be aware of in perhaps a little unfairly in the 2019 exam. So just make sure you're, you're okay with that. Um, so onto this past paper question then you've all been waiting for. So this is Karun from June 2020. So it is one on investor ratios um, and quite a classic question. We've seen this come up before. Um, Karun has life savings of £100,000 and he wishes to buy ordinary shares as an investment and he needs some annual income from this investment. He's researched two companies. He's researched one called Raid PLC, one called Blue PLC, and he's given you the figures there for your five ratios that you um, you need. Um, and what else has he put in there? Because there are six there. Oh, and he's also given you the market price um, per share at the end of the year. So you've got figures for comparatives there. So you've got 2019, which because this was a 2020 paper, that would have been the most recent um, financial statements that have been published. So the same for both companies. Okay, so we'll come back to that um, in a minute. It tells us that RAID is involved in banking and other financial services. They're an established company, been trading for around 50 years, so potentially very stable. But as we've seen in recent years, just because a company's been around for a long time doesn't mean it will necessarily continue in the future. Um, they've got high street banks in most major UK cities, and these buildings are of a significant value to RAID PLC. They use the security against long-term loans, so a little flag there for potential gearing issues. Um, RAID PLC has a policy of only investing in companies which behave ethic ethically in their treatment of its stakeholders. So remember, stakeholders are just anybody, employees, investors, um, suppliers, customers, all that kind of thing. Um, Blue PLC, however, is an online only retailer, so no high street presence, um, which sells electronic goods. It's been trading for seven years, so quite recently started up. Um, it's got a modern warehouse on which there is no debt. So that could be suggesting maybe that gearing is, is lower or low. Um, Blue PLC has recently been in the news for paying its staff the minimum wage and staff complaints about poor working conditions. So not great treatment of its uh, employees there. And then the question itself, evaluate both businesses from Karun's perspective as a potential investor and make a recommendation on how he should invest his savings. And if you want to get a copy of this question, I've just put the link there. I'll put it in the notes afterwards as well. Um, so first of all, with any of these 25 markers, we've got to identify what the problem is. We've been given investor ratios for two companies for two financial years. Um, RAID is well established, 50 years, high street name in banking, owns buildings, and it uses those security against long-term loans, and it only invests in ethical companies. Um, Blue PLC is an online retailer, recent startup, owns its own warehouse in which there's no debt, um, but it's had recent bad bad publicity because it only pays its staff minimum wages and they complain of poor working conditions. So the problem is that Karun has £100,000 of his life savings. Okay, so this isn't just money he can afford to lose, presumably, and he needs an annual income. So those are some clues as to what we need to be looking for. And we need to weigh up or evaluate both businesses from his perspective as a potential investor. Now, the key thing here is that we have to make a recommendation on how he should invest his savings. Obviously, we've got two companies to choose from. Ultimately, we could choose one. We could say go for Raid. We could say go for Blue. We can't just do that, though, without providing some kind of evaluation and some kind of rationale for why we've made that decision. Um, it's perfectly OK in this sort of scenario, I think, to um, suggest that perhaps he splits his risk and it, you know spreads his risk over at least these two companies, if not more, so that uh, he hasn't got all his eggs in one basket. So if one company does fail to perform as well as he hopes, then, um, you know, he has spread his risk um, and hopefully the others will do OK. OK, so we need to do some basic calculations. There's only really been one question, one 25 mark question, I think, that's ever come up in the, the three years that this new specification has been in um, play um, that hasn't required us to do any number crunch. So the first question we need to ask ourselves is how many shares he can afford to buy in each company. And if you look back at the original data, I won't try and flick the uh, PowerPoint back there now because it will take too long. Um, but the market price that was given was actually at the end of the year. 
Okay, so if we just use that as a basis, because one of the limitations of this question is it doesn't tell us what the current market price is. And if you remember that um, at the year end, we publish accounts, it takes several months for those to even be published. So we are potentially at least five or six months down the line from there. So the market price may well have gone up, could have gone down, could have stayed exactly the same. We don't know. So that would be something to flag up in the limitations. Um, but at the moment, just going on the information we've got, because that's all we've got to work on, he could afford to buy 104,166 shares in RAID. So that's his £100,000 investment um, that he's got divided by the 96p market price. Remember, that was the market price at the end of the 2019 financial year would give him 104,166. If we do the same with blue, 100000 investment again, £1.10 market price would give him 90900 and nine shares. So what level of income would he get? So each company, we've got the um, the dividends per share. So if we multiply the number of shares by the dividend per share, we can see that if he invests totally in RAID, based on last year's figures, and there's the thing, we don't know whether those dividend levels will be repeated this year or in the future, um, but he can um, expect to receive 6,250. Whereas if he invests in blue, just about two thousand pounds, so ninety thousand odd shares there at two point two pence. So remember to get your decimal point in the right place. Just double check that before you uh, plow ahead. Um, then we've got to do some analysis and evaluation. So the, the, what we've just seen is the basic AO two. The application is no more than five marks available for that. So the next step is to take each of the ratios and ask yourself some questions. So what is the trend? How does it compare to last year? Which company is performing better on individual ratios or as a whole? Um, are any of the figures unusual or unsustainable? Um, and what is it likely to mean in the short term? OK, and again, in the longer term. So what we need to do is be looking at each individual company. So what is happening with the ratios? Dividend per share is increasing in both cases. So is the earnings per share. Dividend cover is quite low for RAID, whereas it's much higher for Blue. So that suggests Blue are reinvesting a lot of their profits compared to RAID. Um, RAID's last year's interest cover, they couldn't really afford their dividends. It had dipped below one. It's just over one now, but how sustainable is that long term? Whereas with Blue, that looks wholly affordable. Um, price earnings ratio is dropping for RAID PLC, which suggests that perhaps investors are starting to lose interest. Whereas with Blue, it's kind of doubled almost um, from one year to the next. So that suggests that people are expecting great things perhaps from that company. Um, the market price has gone up a bit for, for RAID, about 24p there. But look at the increase for Blue. Now, what I would be doing is perhaps working out the percentage increase from one year to the next um, for each of these. And then we've got the dividend yield. So this is the return that shareholders can be expecting to get. So that correlates with the £100,000 times 6 6.25% is your 6250 income and then times the 2% for blue PLC is the 100,000 investment times 2% is the 2000 income. So if we look at the dividend yield um, for RAID PLC, it's actually dropped by a small amount, but it's halved for, for blue PLC. So, um, you know, you need to be asking some questions about why that might be. OK, so what else do we know about the company? So we can start to throw that into the, the mix. You know, the fact that RAID is well established. It's a stable company with a good brand reputation, behaves ethically. It's got its own property, but it's got debt. So gearing could be high. We don't know. Um, and what would happen if uh, to all that property, if more of the business goes on online? So on one hand, they might be able to rent it out um, and earn money from that or we'll sell it and reinvest that uh, that money. Although at the moment, the high street is not a great place to be particularly following COVID. So, you know, there could be some issues there. Um, if we compare that with Blue, it's a new company. It's only been around seven years. Poor reputation, though. We just think there's a number, I won't mention any names, but a number of companies that have been in the press recently, a certain ferry operator, maybe a certain uh, delivery company as well. Um, you know, what impact is that going to have on profits? So with the ferry company, customers are deserting them, apparently in droves. So, yeah, Blue PLC, if it has a bad reputation, um, that could the profits in future years has got its own warehouse though so no debt secured on that so that suggests perhaps uh, low or no no gearing which could be a positive okay so problems and limitations then we've got to identify as well any limitations to the data so any additional information 
that will be useful in helping us make an informed decision. So thinking about the fact that ratios are based on historical information, as soon as the accounts are published, they're already five months out of date. So, um, you know, just beware of that. Past performance is no guarantee of what might happen in the future. Um, we don't know the current market price of the shares. We've been given a figure, but that was at the, uh, the year end. Um, industry averages, we don't know what those are, how they compare with other um, companies that operate in the same sectors. What do the actual accounts look like? Have they been window dressed? What are the gearing levels? You know, what is the actual amount of debt that this, uh, this company's got? Um, ratios don't consider non-financial information, such as uh, the longer term plans, their strategy, um, the management experience, sources of finance that are being used. Um, we also don't have any information about Karun's attitude to risk. I mean, I think that because it's his life savings, he probably can't afford to lose that money. Um, he should probably, look, if he can't really can't afford to lose it, shares may not be the best option at all. Um, but you could suggest, I don't think we want to start bringing in other ideas, but you know, splitting his investment over several companies, certainly splitting the, the investment between these two would be a viable um, alternative. And what are his, what's his ethical stance? What does he think about the way that um, Blue's employees are being treated? We can ask those questions. So they're expecting you to pick up things. And this is what would happen in real life as an accountant. You know, you wouldn't be necessarily given all the information. You need to ask questions of your client before you can make an informed um, decision. Don't forget that you have to put in a conclusion. If you don't give him some clear advice, you could be stuck down at level one, maximum of five marks. No right or wrong answer, but make sure that your advice is justified. So you could say choose red as it pays out significantly more in dividends, or you could say choose blue because it appears to be growing fast and reinvesting profits, which could make for increased capital gains, potentially increased income in the future. Or you might even say split your investment between the two, one for income, one for growth. Entirely up to you. So remember that the aim is to get to level five. You need a clear and balanced response. So that's one that prehens presents a coherent and logically reasoned judgment and a conclusion and solution that is supported by an astute consideration of a wide range of evidence, including other factors that are, are relevant to so your own knowledge that you can bring to the situation. So you need to be demonstrating a logical chain of reasoning. Um, so a little reminder here about using connectives, particularly cause and effect. You know, he could do this, but the effect will be that, or the company seems to be doing this and, and that could lead to, to something else. So, you know, just make sure, I'm not gonna go through all of these now. Um, there's the link to the website there if you struggle with connectives. So, you know, just make sure that um, you don't just kind of bullet point your answers. Then there needs to be some development of ideas, um, a chain of events and a consequence. Okay, well, thanks very much for listening.